You see this scene? This scene is the reason I want to watch Wicked City. Yeah. In a way, I think that summarizes the uh, tone we're about to go into. Wicked City, this was the first full feature that Kawajiri directed by himself. If you've been watching this series, you've seen Karajiri mentioned several times before throughout different videos. Someone who'd been working at Mushi Pro for a good long time before this. Although it was his running man OVA that really put him over. While he co-directed Lensman, that running man showed visceral, intense, wicked cool. It gave him an opportunity to make a 35-minute OVA based on Wicked City, a series of novels by Hideyuki Kikuchi, who also made Vampire Hunter D. When they saw the tests for Wicked City, they decided to turn it into a whole 90-minute epic. And what an epic it is. Intentionally or not, it changed the industry. Make no mistake, Wicked City is an exploitation film. It's a graphic sexual horror, but it's also a lot of things, let's say, very much solidifying itself in the 80s culture of the time. Kawajiri's characters are, are drawn realistically heavy shaded, they're down-to-earth individuals, living a neon life in the booming city. The film recreates the Tokyo district of Shibuya with on-point accuracy. All of it feels set to the era, from its funky drum machines, occasional arranged pianos, minor pieces of jazz, we see the sleek, shaded, detailed style with the undercurrent of darkness. This film starts with a deceptive love-making scene that turns into graphic body horror. It's at that point you realize we're watching Lethal Weapon mixed with The Thing. Diabolically creative monsters. Yeah, if we could see anything from Lensman, is that Kawajiri has an act for creating the grotesque, the creepy, and the inhuman. Not just that either, the way they sort of morph and twist must have took a lot of effort. It's stark, it leaves it in your brain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take Wicked City as serious as I can. I'm not going to meme on it, I'm not going to joke about it as like some sort of anime boomer who will just tell you how ridiculous it is while also telling you how great the old times were. I want to be genuine with Wicked City, even if, I mean, look at this, because it's absolutely insane. It's a classic body cop template. You have one character, the lady, who comes from the demon world, and the man, who's the hardened detective sort of guy. They have to work together, you know? It's two opposites coming together to protect some old, fudgy, pervert guy. Though, by the end of it, you know it's not all as it seems. One by one, the whole film is just a selection of crazy, over-the-top set pieces that continue the plot forward. Every one of them upping the ante with different styles of techniques, demons, and ways to be exploitative. And yes, it's crazy. And yes, it's silly. And yes, it's goofy. Both undeniably uncomfortable and unbelievable. In the matter of minutes, you can go from screaming cheers of hell yes to complete uncomfortable groans of ooh. Wicked City skirts the line between X-rated thriller and softcore porn. It's in the same camp as an Overfiend, though I would imagine Overfiend is definitely more on one side of the camp than Wicked is. Because Wicked City still has a plot, a lore, it has a world that it is building, alongside its sleazier actions. Listen, I think there needs to be a bit of context put into Wicked City's position. It's not exactly for me to tell a bunch of underpaid, overworked artists uh, making content to keep their studio alive what they can and can't show. Wicked City is about taboo, and it pushes the line into dark places misogynistic, sexual exploitative places. As bleak as it sounds, even making a project like this would have been a business decision. They're trying to keep the studio alive. Sure, it's harsh and edgy. That's why it sold. The rental market was huge in the mid to late 80s. People came back to watch Wicked City again. Sex sells. And these were also made before the internet. This is not a post-internet era of sexual content. This is very much a completely different landscape. So yeah, Wicked City hit a niche and one that made it incredibly popular in places beyond Japan, America, even I think in the England. These VHSs, they were everywhere. It helped begin the Japanimation craze, 
And I'm sure for some people, this anime was like their awakening to the genre, as well as the more inappropriate aspects. And I think when people find anime, the more shouted people, there tends to be one that really hits them with like how blunt it is. There's still a remnant fondness for it because of that. They wanted controversy. They wanted people to stir. They wanted people to be afraid because they knew they'd get more copies sold that way. And yeah, it kind of worked. That doesn't mean I don't get tired when they introduce the super capable, powerful demon lady character, and then she suddenly becomes the most useless character in any fight they have, except for one specific situation. Yeah, I find that a little bit boring, if I'm honest. Despite technically being an OVA, Wicked City did get a limited release in theatres, making it more classified as a full feature film. And the quality is there, this is above the cut of a lot of other sexploitation OVA animes. It drips with its style. It has a distinct colour. You know, this is a world of, of technology and mythology together. Two-tone, flowing visuals, and the blue glow of Tokyo's nightlife beams through the film, even if it was supposed to be a technical error. I've seen this in other Madhouse projects. I think they're trying to use a blue filter on top of the cells, but unfortunately through the exposure process, the blue seems to go way high. And unintentionally, that has became a staple of Kawajiri's work. Uh, it looks good. I mean, just roll with it, man. Just roll with it. At times, Wicked City is mellow, cool, and atmospheric. It's definitely made that way. Kawajiri has a great way of setting up the world just through its visual iconography. It implies more than uh, you can see, which I guess you'd need when you're trying to adapt a whole book series into a film, even though those mellow moments are sort of waning for a moment of absolute explosion. Through its harsher scenes there are moments of sort of genuine character interaction which you know i could feel them i could feel that sort of emotional vulnerability between them the characters are genuine so even when the situation is the most absolutely absurd vaginal spider web lightning through the eyes situation they keep it grounded the actual context of the plot does actually have something that would be worth digging into, and I imagine it would work much better if you had a whole novel series to talk about it. There is something about the tensions between worlds, borders, terrorism, the sort of prejudice between these two different people, these two different races of individuals. I get the impression here that the demons you see in the film are terrorists. They're not like all the demons. They're extremists. There's a lot of demons in the world that live a very normal and average life prefer to keep themselves quiet. And these peace treaties being talked about are a way of keeping the tensions between these two nations of individuals together. Now the way they do that is kind of absurd, but yeah, there is a layer of social political building here. It's beyond just a uh, bad man comes for old guy, save him. <laughs> to get into it, when people fight, it's heavy. And very well choreographed. You could tell Kawajiri would go far in the future as an action director. He teleports people to these surreal hellscapes full of demons and horrific situations. However, honestly, watching Wicked City now with my friend Billy. I'm sorry, Billy. I didn't know it was going to go that way. I didn't know what I was dragging you into. I think I came out the other side being won over. This is definitely a piece of history and it shows Kawajiri's capabilities and where he'd go in the future. Sure, a lot of it seems rushed and the plot is kind of all over the place at times, but the way it sort of ties it all together at the end, it has a sort of finesse that I, uh, I can't help but appreciate. At times, Wicked City is the coolest gift creator you can think of. A melting pot of weird ideas that I guess shouldn't maybe mesh, but they, they all somehow come together in the end. It has a B-movie style idea with an A for execution. And there's one particular point where I realized Wait a minute, the people that made Blade Runner 2048 see this film? Did they base their plot off this film? Because if they did, that, that's kind of hilarious. If you're here for the moody Midnight Cities, the soft faces, the allure, or the direction, I think Wicked City still has something to offer that most don't. You just have to know what you're getting yourself into before you jump on the ride. Kawajiri took this beyond the Call of Duty. He didn't have to make something this to 11, but he did. And even if the studio was using it as a point of desperation, Kawajiri does state that Wicked City is one of his favourite films that he made, one that he remembers. 
with the series also getting a Chinese live-action version many years down the line, and it couldn't help but be somewhat inspired by what Wicked City had done, especially in terms of its stylish colours. Now, overall, Mad Bull would be my choice for over-the-top OVA, but Wicked City should be remembered, and it should be heralded in some ways. It totally deserves a place for what it did, the influence that it brought. It has heart, and enough heart that a whole career could be made off it. And yeah, if you're into adult-style anime, or any other of Kawajiri's works, you probably do owe it to yourself to see where he started. There's a level of poetic justice that eventually, the dreams of Anirama did come true. It just took an extra 20 years. Here's a fun fact here. The art director on Wicked City was so impressive that even Mr. Hayao Miyazaki, a man known for being a bit of a crab apple and critical of the modern lens of anime, decided to hire him for many of Studio Ghibli's projects, including My Name of Totoro, possibly one of the most wholesome films, and a very stark contrast to the work he would have done here. At the end of the day, it's just a bunch of drawings, guys. A bunch of really cool looking drawings. Anyway, special thanks to my patrons, including Joven, and I'll hopefully be back tomorrow to talk about Neo Tokyo. More Kawajiri on the way.